Ah, Christmas. The most wonderful time of the year, when we get home to our family, sing Christmas carols, eat wonderful food, give each other gifts, and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And why not get in the right spirit by playing a load of purely Christian-themed games? The only problem? Most of them, such as Katechumen, Super Noah's Ark 3D, Bible Adventures, Bible Buffet, Eternal War, The War in Heaven, or Spiritual Warfare are all just awful rip-offs of better games. Instead of going through that crap first, I thought we could look at the religious and theological backdrop of one of the greatest game series of all time, The Legend of Zelda. Since the conception of the franchise 30 years ago, Christianity, Islam and Buddhism have all been represented in some form in the games, serving as a backdrop to some of the temples and races. But did you know that prior to the inclusion of the Golden Goddesses, Christianity was supposed to be the intended religion of the Legend of Zelda series? Several traces from this stage of development found their way into the official release of The Legend of Zelda on Famicom and the NES. The clearest example is the first item, or actually the first thing you see in the game, Link wearing his wooden shield. Usually in Zelda games, shields depict coat of arms, symbols, and more specifically, the shield's origin. However, in the original Legend of Zelda, all of the shields had a cross, or more specifically a crucifix, the symbol of Christianity. And you might dismiss this as a slight reference. The only problem is that there is more to it than only the crucifixes on the wooden shield and the magical shield, that might have served as the symbol of Hyrule. In the Japanese and or original release of the game, the Book of Magic was called the Bible. Bible as a name actually makes more sense, as the book had a stereotypical Christian cross on its cover, which brings us over to the first controversy in Zelda history. Nintendo of America's strict content guidelines of censoring Christian and religious content and references in early Zelda games. Since The Legend of Zelda is not the only game in the series where religious symbols or names have appeared, in the direct sequel, The Adventure of Link, even more references to Christianity were included as the relic cross it was an obtainable item, which made specific invisible ghosts in the game visible and more importantly, kept you from dying. The symbolic value in Adventure of Link is undeniable, as even a building, which serves as a church in the game, has, you guessed it, a cross or crucifix on the top and once again the gravestones are there in the graveyard. But these are just peanuts compared to what was planned for A Link to the Past, or should I say, The Legend of Zelda Triforce of the Gods. A Link to the Past is full of Christian references that were either toned down or completely removed in the version Nintendo of America released in 1991. First and foremost, artwork of Link kneeling in front of a crucifix with Jesus Christ was removed from publicity, and then the title Triforce of the Gods, Zelda no Denetsu, Kamigami no Triforce, was replaced with A Link to the Past in the English releases, which in many ways was an act of disgrace to the game developers and specifically creator Shigeru Miyamoto. To the past was clearly intended to have religious references, as the sanctuary and graveyard from their appearance resemble much more a church, and it makes sense that the actual name of the location in the Japanese version was a church. The same goes with the sage in the sanctuary, who was called priest in the Japanese version. Then we have the original title of the game. Triforce of Gods, with the Triforce being the holy relic of the Zelda series and the representation of three great virtues, power, wisdom and courage. This symbol obviously derives from one of feudal Japan's most powerful warrior clans, the Hojo, and represents the three dragon scales that according to the legend were granted to Tokimasa Hojo. However, the virtues found in The Legend of Zelda could easily have been inspired by the Holy Trinity of Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. The same goes with the three golden goddesses that were introduced in Ocarina of Time and the controversy that that game caused. Ocarina of Time marks a massive leap for Zelda, being the first 3D game in the series and brought with it a number of new races such as the Gorons, Kikiri and finally, the Gerudo. Let's take a deeper look at the Gerudo tribe as they spawned controversy of several reasons, such as their original symbol, appearance, clothing and place of origin in the game closely resembling the one of Islamic theology, culture and traditions. 
First, you obviously have the initial symbol of the Gerudo, the crescent moon. The crescent moon caused reactions due to its close to identical shape to the crescent moon and star, the most recognized symbol of the religion of Islam. Nintendo, however, would not take any risks, as they saw the controversy tied to the tribe due to their portrayal of Gandalf as the villain against the Hylians. The similarities were unfortunate and caused this replacement of the crescent moon with the symbol we have till this day. Nonetheless, the Gerudo symbol was far from the most controversial religious inclusion in the game, as the theme of the Fire Temple had an Islamic prayer performed as a chant. There were two main problems with this. 1. The chant used in the theme is closely tied to Allah and the Holy Prophet Muhammad and his family. The second one was that the prayer was accompanied with music, which is haram or forbidden in Islam. The consequence of this was the removal of the chant, only leaving the tune in later versions of the game. It would take some time until Nintendo ED3 would once again touch on the subject of religion, but when they first did, they did not hold anything back with the ancient system. The first obvious reference was the giant statue of Buddha in the center of the dungeon, but two more interesting ones were the references of yin and yang and the harmony between the two, which was perfectly implemented through the dungeon by dividing it into two sections, the upper level being heaven-like and the lower level being hell. But the most ingenious reference was the section where Link had to climb a thin thread from the lower level while shaking off zombie bokoblins. This was inspired by the short story The Spider's Thread by Ryunosuke Akutagawa, where Shakyamuni, or Buddha, lowered a spider's thread down to hell and to a criminal whose only good act was to not kill a spider. He began to climb the thread, but in the moment other sinners in hell began to climb the spider's thread, Kandata, the sinner, shouted that the thread was his alone, and in that very moment the thread broke, casting Kandata and the other sinners back to hell. Gladly, Link was more fortunate. This was the last religious reference in the Zelda franchise to this point, but knowing Nintendo ED3 and their long history of including theology in the Zelda franchise, we might be surprised with another religious nod in Zelda Wii U. So I want to ask you one question. Do you believe that religion will play a role in Zelda Wii U? Write down your opinion in the comment section below. Finally, I wish you all a peaceful, joyful and Merry Christmas with family and friends. I hope you will enjoy the holiday to the fullest and I promise to deliver my gift to you in the form of the second episode of Zelda Ultimate next week. Until then, this was the Commonwealth Realm and Zeltic and, and we, we wish you all a great, great Christmas. Christmas.